like to tell us a little bit about timers and immune system regeneration process? Sure. So I've been engaged in an attempt to prove that certain things can be done in humans that can be done in animals. As a matter of fact, they were discovered in animals in 1986 and essentially ignored since that time. So what I'm talking about in, in particular is to regrow your immune system. So as we grow up, we become healthier and healthier, and our chance of dying is minimum when we go through maturity, uh, around the age of 12 or so. And that's the same age at which your immune system is at its peak. Mm -hmm. But after that, we begin producing sex hormones, and the sex hormones actually start attacking your immune system in a sense. They begin to shrivel this organ that you have in your chest cavity called the thymus. Mm -hmm. The thymus is the master gland of the immune system, and it makes immune system cells that defend you against invaders like bacteria or oh. coronavirus or whatever. And uh, you need that. Uh, production of those defending cells, the T cells, in order to stay alive, but unfortunately they slowly go away as we get into our older ages. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I saw an opportunity to restore the thymus uh, and restore the immune system and probably protect ourselves from a lot of things that kill us as we get older and make us sick. Uh, nobody else really picked up on that in the same way. So I formed a company uh, and uh, we began uh, planning for a clinical trial. We did the clinical trial based at Stanford University mm -hmm. and we treated nine men between the ages of 50 and 65 uh, years. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of that trial, we showed a reversal of the normal age-related trends in the immune system. We saw more of the cells we want to see and we saw more immune functions coming back that look like they do things like defend the body against cancer, for example. So that was very exciting, but we also saw other things as well. We saw an improvement in kidney function. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw an improvement in uh, the risk of uh, cancer based on markers of, of the structure of the prostate gland, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and we also saw this other phenomenon, which I'm sure we'll get into, which is reversal of aging based on something called an epigenetic clock. That is very exciting. Yes. Yeah, what has inspired you to do this research in, in immune system regeneration? So my initial inspiration was this news report that came out and then of course just went away as soon as it came out, indicating that there had been this amazing development in animals in which they could regrow the thymus gland. So the thymus is you know in your chest cavity and, and it produces T cells but as we get older it goes away and uh, this individual Keith Kelly showed that by giving old rats growth hormone you could actually regrow the thymus and even though the immune system of the animals was reduced by about 90 percent in its function he was able to restore it to 100 wow. percent of what it was in youth and uh, I published an uh, editorial uh, in 1991 about this and everybody ignored it. So they ignored uh, Kelly's work and they ignored my editorial. So eventually I had to do something about it myself. So I did a self-experiment in which I gave myself growth hormone mm -hmm. plus one other thing and showed... <laughs> Dedication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I got my doctor to go along with it, which is hard to do these days, but yeah. my doctor supervised uh, my self-experiment. He was actually an anti-aging enthusiast himself. Uh, and after about a month, I took myself uh, into an MRI scanning center and scanned my thymus and compared it to the way the thymus looked before I had treated myself with growth hormone. Mm -hmm. And it was showing distinct signs of improvement. In fact, I was able to show that my increase in thymic functional mass was scientifically provable. It was statistically significant is what we say. Wow, that is mm -hmm. very exciting. Yeah. I, you know, I can imagine you amazing. were very excited. Yeah, I was. But it was just me, you know, one experiment. I had no money to pursue this. Nobody interested in helping me with this. So it, it did nothing for many years. Mm -hmm. But eventually, uh, one of the people that is interested in aging, who's a member of a discussion group that I participate in, contacted me and we were talking about ideas and he became interested and we actually formed the company and did the trial. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that is very great. I'm happy yeah. to hear that. Thank you. The things are moving forward. Yes. <laughs> when will phase two clinical trial begin? So our first study was very successful. It became very famous, actually. It's mm -hmm. all over the world uh, being discussed because of the age reversal aspect of it. But it was only done on nine guys. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, by coincidence, only done on Caucasian guys. We don't have uh, other ethnicities uh, okay. tested in that. I don't think it's going to make any difference, but we don't have that. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any women uh, around at the time to you know, participate, so we don't know if it will work in women, although we assume it mm -hmm. will. So there's a lot of things like that that we need to sort of revisit and it, so we can expand and extend uh, the previous results. So we're going to be starting a new trial probably in a month or two. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're looking at some of the logistic details right now. Uh, is going to be done in Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have some telemedicine approaches, which we hopefully someday can disseminate this kind of treatment all over the United States and hopefully the world. But for right now, we prefer to see the people in the trial. We have a doctor who's one of our team members, and he'll come in and, and make sure that everybody looks like they're supposed to look based on yeah. the questionnaires they fill out and things like that. So we'll launch the trial uh, in Southern California very soon and will include not only uh, different ethnicities and women, but also people of different ages. Mm -hmm. In our trial, we were not able to show any problem as you could increase in age from about 50 to 65. You got the same benefits yeah. regardless, but there may be a limit. So we're going to be testing people greater than 65. We're also going to test people younger than 50 mm. because the ideal age might be 46 or something like that, which yeah. is how old I was when I did my self-experiment. So we're going to do all of that. We're also going to do something else, which is a lot of people have contacted us. We've actually had hundreds of people come to us saying they want to have uh, a chance to be in this trial. Uh, but a lot of them are not uh, very great health. And uh, I have a personal friend, for example, who's not in very good health, but I would certainly like to include him. So we're going to have two groups uh, within the new trial, which specifically include people who are not in perfect health. The, the guys in our original trial were in excellent uh, health by and large, although they did have some problems some of them didn't tell me about because they wanted to be in the trial. <laughs> <laughs> but what can you do? They did well anyway. <laughs> so we're going to deliberately include some people who are perhaps more reflective of the general population. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we'll get a great deal of information out of this. We'll have more people. We'll see if we can come up with some kind of a control group uh, that will remain to be seen uh, because it's always nice to be able to say that you've, you've got a control group, scientists like that. The way we got around that in the first trial was by having every person be himself as the control. So we're comparing everybody to himself before treatment. Mm -hmm. And that, that was good enough for us and I think it's valid, but uh, if we can do more, uh, we, we will do that. Yeah, and anyone can basically sign up for the trial as far as I understand. Yeah, pretty much everyone, except we're not going to take anybody over the age of 80, we're not going to take anybody under the age of 40. Mm -hmm. uh, and also there's one other limitation, we can't take anybody who has cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are actually thinking about a possible strategy, it's a wild and crazy idea, but I have some ideas that might allow us to treat people who have cancer in the future uh, or who have a history of cancer in the family or in their, in their past history. Um, but we don't have that right now. So we're going to be talking to people about maybe uh, getting information along those lines. But for the time being, this new trial, which we're calling the TRIMAX trial, we cannot accept people who have cancer or, or an elevated risk of cancer. The reason for that is that growth hormone is a growth hormone. It, it makes you grow, and that means it makes cells divide. Mm -hmm. And cancer is an out-of-control process of cell yeah. division. So if you had pre-existing cancer, it's not going to be good for you. So we, yeah. uh, we're not going to do that. But there are other ways and, uh, that they might work. You know, there's no evidence in humans, but there is animal data that would support it. So it might be worth a shot in, in the future. Who knows, maybe you would discover the real holy grail for curing cancer. Well, uh, part of the answer to cancer is the immune system. So yes. the most successful way of treating cancer now is with immunotherapy. Uh, you take a, the cells uh, out of a given cancer victim, you rev them up and make them really angry, and then you put them back in, and then they kill the cancer. 
There are other drugs that sort of strip away some of the defenses that cancer cells have between themselves and your immune system. Mm -hmm. We found, by the way, in our trial that some of those defenses were stripped away by our treatment. We had no idea that was going to happen. That is but, amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. There's, uh, there are drugs being sold uh, currently that strip away these cancer defenses. They're bringing in a total of about $13 billion a year to the drug companies. They have bad side effects. Our very simple and natural treatment has no side effects to speak of and accomplishes what looks like the same thing. So it seems uh, like that could be a good thing to get out there. Uh, but, you know, if we improve the immune system, we're probably going to be improving people's ability to resist getting cancer in the first place, or if they do get it later in life after the trial is over, uh, uh, then they should be able to fight it off more effectively. That would be amazing. Yeah. For many people. Yeah, many absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody wants to get cancer. So how long do you think it would take you to get an FDA approval? It's hard to say. Um, we have much more favorable situation than most small startup companies who are trying to get something through the FDA. Uh, the tremendous advantage that we have is that everything in our treatment is already FDA approved. Mm -hmm. So the combination is novel and new, and so the FDA requires us to go through them to do our trials, but they've had no concerns about the safety aspects of the trial. And the big thing about getting FDA approval is mostly safety. So you could spend 10 or 20 years developing a novel drug and it passes every test you can think of and then when you put it out into a large population, say 100,000 people, you find out it has a terrible side effect uh, and sometimes that can, that can prevent you from actually taking it to market. Uh, we don't think that we're going to have that kind of a problem and we don't think that the FDA is going to hold up uh, approval. Um, so we'll see about that. Mm -hmm.